Hello, my amazing artists. Welcome back. Today we're going to be doing your favorite thing, painting. So we're going to be making one of these. And this was inspired by one of my amazing middle school art students who was always creating these blended, beautiful, painted skies. So I thought that would be fun for us to do today. So if you have paints, please join me in creating one of these artworks. Um, it's really peaceful and relaxing and it's a lot of fun. I'm going to start today by creating a color wheel as a way to remind you guys about primary and secondary colors because we'll be mixing our paints today. So I just used a bowl to create a circle with markers and I am going to start with my primary colors. I wonder if you guys remember which three colors are primary. So the first color is red. These three primary colors are going to be the paint colors that we use today. The second one is yellow. Do you know what the last one is? Blue. So red, yellow, and blue are our primary colors. And with those, we can create other colors that we could use for our painting today. Now let's go over our secondary colors. So when you mix red and yellow together, you get orange. Orange is our first secondary color. Can you guys remember the other ones? Blue and yellow together makes green. And finally, blue and red together make purple or violet. So orange, green, purple, those are our secondary colors. We can use our primary colors to create those colors. And that's what we're going to be doing with our painting today. So let's get all set up. I am using a thick paper that is meant for mixed media. So it is great for painting on. You could use a canvas if you want, or if you have a thinner paper, make sure you have something underneath so it doesn't bleed through to the table. I've got water and a paper towel. I've got my brush, and then I have red, yellow, and blue, my three primary color paints. I'm using acrylic paint today. Acrylic is ideal for a quick painting because it, dries really quickly. So I'm getting red on my brush to begin with and I'm picking a direction that I want to paint in. I just want to go across my paper horizontally and I'm going to be painting back and forth throughout this whole painting. So I'm making sure to get that paint at the very top and edge of my paper I can do that because my paper is raised in the spiral notebook, so it's not getting on my desk. And you could always put a paper underneath this one to make sure you're not making it too big of a mess. So whenever you're painting, it should feel smooth and like you're pushing that paint back and forth across the paper. It should never feel like it's dry. So I'm keeping in mind the fact that I'm going to have six different colors going along this paper. If you need to mark off like with a pencil those six different sections, that might be helpful for you. Um, but I'm just kind of eyeing it. So whenever you're finished with that color, you will take your brush and swirl it around in your water cup, making sure to hit the bottom of your cup. And once you lift your brush and it looks like there's no more color on it, you can make sure by putting it in your paper towel. So my brush is now clean and it's dry and it's ready for yellow. I know from my color wheel that red and yellow make orange, so I'm leaving this section open 
for my orange color. So I'm doing the exact same thing I did with red. I'm painting back and forth in that same direction and I'm making sure that it feels smooth and that it's pushing the color back and forth and it shouldn't feel dry. The bottom of this yellow section should hit at about the halfway point on your paper. So I'm finished with my yellow and I'm going to combine yellow and red and start mixing to create an orange. I'm leaving some yellow and some red left over so I can mix them with blue later on. I'm just slowly adding red to my yellow. What I've found is that whenever you're mixing with yellow, yellow is easily overpowered by the other color. So you want it to be mostly yellow at the start and add in that other color until you get the color you desire. Otherwise, that other color, so in this is instance, red would overpower the yellow. So once you've got an orange color that you like, you will start filling in that empty space that you left and you're still painting in the same direction, nice and smooth and filling in all the white spaces that you've left. Now it looks really stripey. You can see that it's red stripe, orange stripe, yellow stripe, but I don't want it to look that way. I want it to look blended. So I'm going to start painting towards one of my sections. I'm going to paint into my yellow section and I'm still keeping that motion back and forth and back and forth. And as I get into that yellow section that's still wet, it's going to start blending a little bit more so that it's more smooth and natural looking and it doesn't look so stripey. And I'm gonna do the same thing up here with the red. And since this is acrylic paint, it does dry really fast. So my red was a little too dry and that's why I'm adding back in some red paint just so that it's easier to blend together. Don't go crazy though. You don't need to add very much red at all in order to create this effect. All right, so I am finished with my warm colors and it looks very sunset-like. It's well blended and I'm happy with it. So I'm moving on to cool colors. So I'm getting all of that red, orange, yellow off my brush. I want my brush nice and clean and dry before I move on. So the cool colors are gonna take up the other half of the paper. So I'm getting blue and I'm going to paint in the middle of that white section so that I leave room for green and purple. And I am still painting in that same way that I did before, very smooth and back and forth in the same direction. I need to blend yellow and blue together. And I already know that the blue is definitely going to overpower my yellow. So I am barely adding any blue to the yellow just to see what that looks like. And then I'll slowly add more blue until I get a green that I'm happy with. So mixing colors is kind of the same thing as experimenting. So you're sort of this color scientist. So with that green, I'm filling in the section between the yellow and the blue. And again, it will look stripey at first, but we'll blend it together to make it look a little bit better. So going in that same direction, I'm going to start painting inside of the blue section that I have. And that blue is still wet, so it will blend nicely, I think. So I'm just 
back and forth, back and forth into the blue section and then back up into the green section. And you just kind of keep repeating that until it looks like a smooth blend. When you're happy with it, get all that color off your brush. Your paint water is probably looking pretty dirty right now. Make sure you get it all off in your paper towel. So there is this really big contrast between this cool green and this warm yellow. So I might have a little bit more trouble with blending these two colors, but I'm going to figure it out. It's going to be fine. I think I might need a little bit more yellow paint in order to be successful. So I'm just going to add a little bit more yellow paint to my palette over here. Going to get that green off my brush. And then I'm going to take that yellow and put it back in the yellow section, just getting that yellow section to be a little bit thicker and more wet so that it will blend a little bit easier. And then with that yellow, I'm going to come downwards into the green and then come back up a little bit and back and forth and back and forth until I think it looks blended. So the last color we need to mix is purple. And that's probably, in my opinion, the most difficult color to make. It's just kind of hard to find that balance between red and blue. So it is gonna take a little bit of patience and you might find that you need to add in white or black to change the lightness or darkness of the color that you make. So I'm just going ahead and mixing in my red and blue and I can already tell that I mixed too much blue in because it is very dark. So I'm probably going to end up adding in some white paint to lighten it up. So I'm adding some white and I'm going to see if that changes the color into maybe one that I'm happier with. And I think it's still just way too blue and now it almost looks gray. All right, so I'm going to add more red. Hey, we're all experimenting, right? So once you finally find a purple that you like, you will do the same thing for the last time you're painting in that empty space, back and forth, back and forth, and you'll end up going into that blue section, just making sure it's all nice and blended. And I think I'm finished. That was so fun. So I'm going to let this dry for a little while and then I'm going to come back and just add a few things with white paint. Now I'm switching brushes. So I made sure to clean the brush I was using. And how I did that was I ran it under water coming from the sink and I just made sure to keep 
pushing together my bristles just like this to make sure that there wasn't any paint left inside of them. So once you are able to push your brushes together like this and you don't feel or see any paint coming onto your fingers, then you know that it's clean. I'm going to be using some much smaller brushes and I flipped my paper around so that now my cool colors are on the top and my warm colors are on the bottom because I'm going to add some sort of uh, sky-like details on top of this painting. So I'm going to have clouds in the warm section and stars in the cool section. So I am taking a small brush, getting a little bit of white on it, not much, and I'm just going to sort of start patting onto my painting. So I'm not painting in the smooth way that I was earlier. I'm using my brush to create texture and I want it to be a cloud-like texture. So it's just patting my brush up and down, up and down, up and down until I feel like it looks very light and airy like a cloud and the great thing about painting clouds is there's not really a wrong way to do it because all clouds look different so you might want to find some inspiration by looking outside looking up at the sky or looking up pictures of clouds maybe you have a favorite kind of cloud that you would like to paint So I'm going to stop there with my clouds. I'm happy with these four different clouds at the bottom half of my paper. It makes the bottom half of my paper feel balanced, I think. So I'm ready to move on to the cool section of my paper. And I'm going to be painting stars up here. Um, you might have a preference with what kind of stars you like to draw or paint. Um, mine will be sort of like crisscross stars and polka dot stars and they could be all different sizes they could be um, a whole whole bunch of stars or maybe just a little bit of stars maybe you have a favorite constellation you could paint up here or you could paint a rocket ship or um, a planet or the moon um, don't feel limited by what I choose to do with my art you always have the freedom to make yours unique and um, special to you. The last thing I'm doing is adding an itty bit a bit of black for some cute little non-realistic birds flying near the clouds. 
you will know that your artwork is finished when it feels balanced. And what I mean by that is it won't feel like it's really cluttered in one section and empty in another section. It should feel like the paper is complete and you should feel happy and proud when you look at it. So whenever you finish, um, give yourself a high five and take a picture of it and send it to me, please. I would love to see it. You guys are amazing.